So and, and, and another thing that is really big for people is I don't think that I, I can ever be an author. Mm. I, I don't have enough content in me to be able to put in that book. The thing is questions triggers content. Mm. Most of the times when people say that I don't have content, even as a speaker, it's because you've not been asking yourself the right questions. Right. Because even when you're standing and you're speaking, if you should go blank, all you need to say, okay, great. What question or what one question would my audience ask me yeah. if I wasn't standing here on the platform? Hey there, lucrative ladies. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so incredibly excited um, about today. I have an incredible guest with me today who is a multi-award winning speaker, best-selling author, and a book creation mentor, who also has an incredible story that I wanna share with you. So welcome to the show today, the amazing Michelle Watson. The author behind Authority. <laughs> Hello, Michelle. Hello, Pam. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to have you here. I mean, we've known each other for quite a few months online, yes. and it's our first time meeting in person. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, how incredible to meet you in person and to actually hold this book oh, in my hand. Great. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. So I want to talk to you about how does one go from um, this is my story or this is my passion or this is what I, what I want to write about to not just write a book, but write a book that sells. Right. You see, not so, just, I don't want them to just, just write a book. Exactly, you can't just write a book. Yeah. Because what I realised is you could write a book and it's motivational. Yes, yes, yes. But it won't necessarily put money in your pocket. Yeah, Because that's, that's right. what I did with my first one. When I wrote my second one, at the time I was still dry, I was doing my full-time job as a driver on the Victoria Line. Yeah. Yeah? Right. Um, so I had stuff coming in my head and, and driving. I would get home or once I get a break, I have a notebook and I'm writing down. Yeah. But then I thought to myself, okay, great. Who is this really aiming for? Yeah. Because do I want to motivate again or do I actually want to create something that's going to bring money in? Yeah. Because it's all good motivating and, right. and I'm all about that, but that's not going to feed my children. Mm. That's not going to put a roof over my head. So it's about now paying attention to not just your story, yeah. but looking at elements of that story that could then make a difference to someone else. Yes. See, sometimes our experiences can be created into a product yeah because somebody's going through they're now walking the road that you once walked that's right but they don't know the steps yeah they don't know okay what block do i step on that's not going to sink mm -hmm. <laughs> that's going to cost me more money down the line right yeah. so it's really pinpointing and getting down to the needs desires and pain points of yeah. the reader yeah right what are the questions that's going through their head? Mm. So you want to make sure that you're not just writing, but you're writing targeting that t particular market. Right. So the question is, who is my target population? Right. Okay, so you begin with who the person is, what problems yes. they've gone through, mm -hmm. what you have gone through, mm -hmm. right, and creating the steps, right, that's to it. get them from A to B, to B essentially. Yes. And that is what your book is. Yeah. You know, when you say it that way, it sounds so simple. <laughs> so what, you know, what is it? Why you've been working with so many people. Why mm -hmm. is it that people struggle? You know, there are so many people who want to write a book. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a book in everybody. I've heard you say, you know, yeah. there's a book in you. So what is the biggest limiting belief that people have when it comes to writing a book that sells? Um, one of it being imposter syndrome. Okay. Because I think I don't know enough to even be talking about this or teaching this, right? Yeah. And what they need to realize is that you just need to be one step ahead. Right. So I know people that's say, right. oh, one step ahead, that's not enough. But hold on. The fact that you're one step ahead yeah. means you've taken a step that that person still hasn't taken. That's right. Yeah. And they don't know how to take that step. Yeah. So and, and, and another thing that is really big for people is I don't think that I, I can ever be an author. Mm. I, I don't have enough content in me to be able to put in that book. The thing is, questions triggers content. Mm. Most of the times when people say that I don't have content, even as a speaker, it's because you've not been asking yourself the right questions. Right. Because even when you're standing and you're speaking, if you should go blank, all you need to say, okay, great. What question or what one question would my audience ask me yeah. if I wasn't standing here on the platform? Yeah. Right. And that opens up a whole can of stuff because then if it's, let's say you're talking about fear. Yeah. Right. You would then be saying to yourself, what questions do people have around fear? That's right. Yeah. yeah. It's mindset. It's procrastination. It's mm -hmm. why they don't take the step. Then you start yeah. asking more. Why is that important? Yeah. Then you start to dig deep. Is there f facts, statistics that you can release to open that topic up even more? Yeah. Right. Are there people that you can relate to 
Yeah. But you can say, okay, this was one person that went through that, and now this is where they are. Yeah. Right? And you start breaking that lifestyle down. Yeah. So that is what it is. It's just really breaking it down into little snippets. Yes, that's right. And taking it step by step. Step by step. And I love it. You know, speaking about imposter syndrome, I mean, Jesus, that's one of the biggest holdups when it yeah. comes to everything, not just writing a book, yeah. starting a business, yeah. um, in anything, even people who are flourishing in their business experience. I've, I've been through it myself. I I'm sure you have as Definitely. well. Definitely. Right? Right, where you get to a certain stage and you start feeling like, you know, am I, you know, is, you know, am I going to get found out? You know, am I a fraud? Is, you know, am I really, you know, up for doing this? Is yeah. this something that I'm supposed to be doing? So if there is one key thing that you could share, how does one break out of, you know, that imposter syndrome and then go for what they want, be yeah. it to write a book, start their business, whatever the case may be, you want to get out of the imposter syndrome. What is your biggest tip for I'm that? I want to say something and it sounds so simple. And people may be thinking, really? The one thing, the main thing that's worked for me is about being real. Mm, okay. Being and staying real to who you are. Yeah. Because here's the thing, I say to myself, if by me being who I am, someone doesn't want, want to work with me, yeah. then they weren't the person that I should be working with in the first place. That's right. Yeah. Right? And that is so important to me. If there's anyone that knows me, they know that I don't try to be fake. Yeah. So before I had opened up and spoken about what went wrong with me, then I think I was really living in that imposter syndrome because mm. a lot of my family didn't know, people didn't know. Mm. And then when I did my first talk and revealed like the really in-depth stuff of what went on in that abusive marriage, yeah. I had a lady that came up to me. Actually, she, didn't, she came up to me and I gave her a book for free. She went home and read and she called me because my number was in the book yeah. and 15 years she's been in a marriage where she's been abused oh. and I was the first person that she's ever told oh my gosh and she doesn't know me I don't know her that was my one time meeting her and I literally cried and I thought imagine if I had remained silent yeah um, so I realized that this was no longer a shame, yeah. but this was now a story that should really go out and change lives. That's right. right. And that's how that started to fade away. Obviously, it still creeps up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right? I went from that stage to writing my first book and thinking, oh, my God. Yeah. You know, and then going from that to then starting my business and it creeps up again. Do that's I know right. enough? That's you right. Know? So in every stage, it will creep up. It will. But the main thing is be real to who you are. Yeah. Be yeah, real. Absolutely. Don't try to be. If you don't know something that your client asks you, it's better for you to say, you know what, I've never encountered this before. Yeah. I'm going to go and find out the information for you and give it to you. That's Instead right. of you trying to say stuff and then looking stupid. Yeah, no, that's right. right. <laughs> so, I, I really love that. And I, you know, I would add to that, that park that part of yourself and just yeah. park it to the side yeah. because it will always be there definitely the higher you rise the bigger that feeling that that feeling of the fear the doubt the am i good enough yeah. it will come the more money you make people think that money is everything and the, no. and the moment you start to make money <laughs> you start to feel confident no you need to feel confident and then the money will come definitely. and then you again it's the battle between the ears isn't it it's mm -hmm. that thing in your mind that's where the real battle is that's when it. it comes to writing a book successfully and when it comes to starting a business and building it the only battle we all really have to face is that one yeah. between our ears so once you figure out okay my thing is imposter syndrome or my thing is fear my thing is doubt okay you acknowledge it mm -hmm. like you have done and you go okay brilliant this is my thing now i'm going to park it to the side and do it anyway definitely then you know you will be successful when you are consistent correct definitely that's it so i want to ask you this is an incredible book um, you know, and I'm really looking forward to actually taking action from it because I will do and be reporting back. Um, I want to ask you if there was something that you could share with our audience, you know, your five rules of success mm -hmm. when it comes to writing a book that sells. Yes. Right. So these are for people in business. They're not just doing it for motivation. Mm -hmm. What are your top five rules of success when it comes to that? OK, great. So the first one for me is this. You need to make sure that you're putting your expert positioning story in there. Nice. Definitely. Your expert positioning story, your audience, your people want to know who is, that, who is it that yeah. they're working with? What's their morals? What's their values? Yeah. But more importantly, what puts them in the position to talk to me about this? Mm. Right? Because it's all good for you to tell somebody, don't eat this yeah. or don't do that. But what gives you the right yeah because people are going to ask that yes. how do you know about this what what journey have you been on right mm -hmm. do you have the experience of it mm. so that positioning story is very important and a lot of people leave it out yeah right for my, with my clients i always say to them let that be one of the first things that you write about yeah right um the next thing is always remember the ndp okay 
needs, desires, and pain points of your clients. Ah, okay. That is crucial because at every time when writing your book and going through your marketing messages that you need to be trickle feeding in your book, it needs to be targeting that. That's right. right? When you're watching an advert, if you're working away on your laptop and you look up, that's because the advert either address the pain that you're going through, yeah. address the desire yeah. that, you're going, that you want to yeah. have, right? So that is very important. Yeah. Michelle, thank you so much. It has been incredible having you. And um, okay. where can my viewers find you? So they can find me on Twitter, uh -huh. LinkedIn, at Break Free Limited. Um, and they can find me on Facebook. Fantastic. So the Authors Lounge is a good place for them to come. I share yeah. tips, strategies on how they can write their books. Wonderful. We are going to link that in the description, guys. Listen, take a good look at this. I want you to go ahead and get this. You can get it on Amazon. Reach out to Michelle, stalk her, find her where she is and find out specifically not only how to write your book, because I think that you can easily find those steps, but how to write a book that sells, how to write a book that um, brings you revenue, that where your book becomes a revenue source. This is the key to using your book to build a lucrative business. Yeah. So make sure you check it out and make sure you grab the book follow the steps and of course reach out to michelle so that you can find out exactly how to do what she calls the tail end which is turning that book into a revenue source it's been incredible um, having you watch us thank you so much if you haven't already please make sure you subscribe amazing thank you so much thank you so much michelle it's been amazing much. having you thank you so much lucrative ladies thank you michelle have you enjoyed it yes i have